And everybody stand. If you only knew what kind of harvest was coming out of the seed you just sowed, you would be going absolutely crazy right now. Come on, somebody just give him a praise in advance for your harvest. You, you know, praise him like you really believe you got a harvest. Amen. Lift that seed up. Father, we thank you for seed time and harvest. The seed has been sowed, and now it's harvest time. We decree in the next season, amen, a supernatural harvest. A harvest that shocks everybody. <laughs> I wish they heard what I said, Lord. A harvest that shocks everybody. Oh, glory. Give God another praise. <laughs> Woo. Turn around and tell somebody, tonight's my night for a miracle. And you may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you. Wow, God is doing something in Canada. I've got to watch a little bit of the services on Facebook, and my Lord, the presence of God has been under this tent. And I am so excited to be here tonight, to see so many of you that we have met in the past, and to be with the man of God, Pastor Apostle Russ Miss's wife, but what God's doing in Florida. Man, it's an exciting hour, church. Amen. I was... Uh, I left home a little over almost five weeks ago in my Cadillac Escalade, and we have traveled about 4,000 miles, I guess, already. We flew here last night. We was in New York, New York, and yesterday morning we was in uh, Brooklyn, and Saturday night we was with the Chinese at the 24-hour prayer center in Flushing, New York, and before that we was under a tent in Queens, New York for a couple nights. And something is shifting. Something is changing. Amen. We're getting ready to step into the greatest season we've ever been in. What an exciting hour. Pastor, you know, right now while I'm preaching here, I am preaching on Facebook. I'm preaching on Twitter. I'm preaching over the phone. And I'm preaching uh, on web church. We pre-recorded. Normally we do it live. But we pre-recorded it. So I'm preaching about five places right now. Isn't that exciting? Sometimes on Monday night we have 11 to 1,200 join us over the phone or Facebook or one of more than that sometimes. And man, if Paul could see what's going on today, he would have a hard time believing it. Come on. Paul wouldn't even believe I was in New York last night in Canada today. He had to ride a boat or walk or something. <laughs> oh, I got a word. Are you ready for the word? Wow. Before I open the word, Blaze, come up here. This young preaching man, he's a young preacher that loves God, prays, reads his Bible. And all you single girls and ladies, he's single, single, full of the Holy Ghost, got a car, got a job. Amen. Loves the Lord, full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He's going to announce a few things right before I preach. Give him a good hand. First time to ever be in Canada. Don't you like that name, Blaze? Fire! He's crazy. Okay, I got a few things here that's on our table that I want to uh, mention and talk about. He has some books that he wrote himself and CDs um, that, with him preaching that we have on the table over there. One of the things that I brought up here to mention that is uh, one of my most favorite things that he, we take and sell, and it's called The Teachings of the Torah. And what it is, it's the first five books of the Bible, of course, and um, it has a commentary on it, and it roll, unrolls like a scroll. This is it right here. And it's got the Hebrew words, and it's got the Greek, the Aramaic, all things like that, taking it and translating it into the English and showing you, breaking it down into what it actually means into the English form to uh, give you a better understanding what they actually meant. It also has a very um, it has very interesting um, references in it from the uh, New Testament, talking about from the Old Testament to the New Testament. 
One of the things that's my favorite in there is um, whenever Mo- it talks about whenever the rock was following the Israelites in the wilderness, how it stayed following them the whole time like it was just trailing behind them as they'd walk. And that rock, rock was what gave them water and fed them. And that rock was Jesus. And it explains, it breaks it down, how it's just amazing revelation on how it followed them through many different things. And then one thing that also um, I really like personally is the manna. It talks about the manna that came down from heaven. And that manna was Jesus also. But that manna, they could, they could not store up that manna. It, it would be it's spoiled. They couldn't sort it up for the next day. They had to get it, get the manna every day renewed. But the thing that's awesome about that is that manna was Jesus, and it talks about that. And um, so basically, the revelation on that is just saying, get in the Word daily because you can't live on yesterday's bread. You got to live on today's bread. Tomorrow, it's going to be another day. You have to live. It's today, today, today. So you have to get in the Word daily, or it's going to spoil. You can't live on it yesterday, and you'll die if you don't. You'll starve. So I like that. It's very, very. Um, a lot of uh, there's just a lot of things he's learned more in this in in just a week or two weeks than he has in a whole year out of his regular Bibles. And he actually got the whole Bible like this, and he stays in it. And he don't go into any other Bible anymore. He don't go into his King James or anything like that. So he stays in that one. There's another book that's on the prophetic that I really like. It's personally one of my favorites. Also, that's why I brought it up here. And it talks about it helps you understand your dreams. It's called Understanding the Dreams That You Dream. And it talks about colors, numbers, uh, animals, whatever thing means, fish, whatever it means, you know, it explains it, what it means. So whenever you're dreaming, you can write down your dream and you can go back and check out and see what everything means and see what God's trying to say to you. So I personally like it because it'll help you with your, your dreams and understanding what God's saying to you at that moment. And it'll really take you to a whole new level in your prophetic understanding. And one, another book that he... Um, he just got, it's his best one, it's his uh, newest book that's uh, selling quite often right now, a lot, and uh, it's called Divine Connections. I really believe in this because he was m- one of my divine connections, my most important divine connections. He's actually, I went, whenever I met him, um, after one of his pastors at his other churches gave me a prophetic word, and Jesus came and just completely changed everything about me and turned me completely around. He was my connection that brought me from the bottom to the top. Completely. Way, I was way low. I had no plans. I didn't know what I was going to do. And then he, God connected me to him and everything. Everything spun around. Just blessing after blessing after blessing. Everywhere I go, blessings follow me. And I like one thing that he talks about is how not the blessings are only following you, but they're going to get in front of you before where you get. And when you'll meet your blessing, that's in front of you. So I like... I like this because it talks about divine connections, how to look for your divine connection, how to know, how to understand and discern for those people. Look for those people because they can make a tremendous difference in your life. We have some anointing oil back there, too, from the Holy Land. So um, if you want some Holy Land oil, I recommend that because it's very amazing. And one last thing, which is my favorite um, personally because I experienced it myself, and it's, it's preaching on a God moment. My life was changed, and this is, the, this is the CD. My life was changed completely in one God moment. I didn't know God was drawing me in, but Jesus was meeting me. He had a moment for me. And in that moment, I was completely set free from pornography, addiction, alcohol, drugs, many different things in one moment completely set free. It changed my whole life. One God moment, but God doesn't only have one God moment for you. He's got many. He wants to give you many because he wants to show you his goodness. And he prophetically preaches those moments into your life in this CD, talks about it, explains it. And it's just an amazing preaching to get and listen to over and over and over and just get your God moment. So um, if everybody will give uh, God a hand clap of praise as he comes and preaches and the word to you. Amen. Everybody stand. Once again, we honor the man of God of this house. I'm so honored to be here, so honored to be a part of what God's doing. And all the other ministers, wow, so many men of God here, women of God here. Turn your Bibles to Amos 9.13. I want to release a word. Remain standing, if you would, just as I read the scripture. I want to release a word that, to the best of my knowledge, when God gave me this word, he's only allowed me to release it. I believe you're the fourth place that I've been allowed to release it, and I prophetically decree that through this word, many of you are going to go to a new level of living. I am a prophet. Amen. Hand me that horn of oil, please. Amen. I, uh, if you study Judaism, they say whenever my wife is in Israel now, my daughter just got back, 
Uh, she's learned, been learning Hebrew in Israel, and we have been twice this year. But uh, they say whenever uh, David walked in front of Samuel, when all the other brothers walked in front of him, if you study it out, you know, Samuel almost missed God. He really thought one of those others was the king. But they tell us that he tried to get the oil to flow, but the oil wouldn't flow. But when little David walked up, that oil started flowing. And let me tell you what makes my oil flow. It's the prophetic. And tonight we're going to prophesy and decree something that's going to change your life. Amos chapter 9, verse 13. Amos chapter 9, 13. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the threader of grapes him that soweth seed. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My apostle, Dr. Gwen Shaw, who went to be with the Lord several years ago, a number of years ago she gave me a Bible. It was a simple-looking Bible, but it was called the Message Bible. And I want to read out of the Message Bible. Yes, indeed, it won't be long now. God's decree, things are going to happen so fast your head will swim. Somebody missing it already. One thing on the heels of another. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. Hallelujah. And everywhere you look, blessings, blessings, like pouring off the, like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. And I will make everything right again for my people Israel. Amen. Say amen to the word of the Lord. The prophetic word that the prophet Amos gave to the people of God in this day, his day, was something that had never happened before. It is something that had never happened. And that was that God was going to give them a harvest that would be so abundant and so great that before they could gather it up, it would be time to plow the ground again. Come on, somebody. God said, I'm going to bless you so much. I'm going to bless you so much that while you're reaping your harvest, the plowman is going to overtake you. This is something that's unheard of in the agriculture world. It's something absolutely unheard of. But God said, this is what I'm going to do. I want to prophetically decree tonight that there are some among us. You might be the one. Shout. If when I say it, if you believe you are, then give God a praise. There are some among us that what God is getting ready to do in your life, what you are getting ready to experience, where you're getting ready to go, what you're getting ready to have is something you have never experienced before. It's something you've never seen before. I feel like prophesying. I'm a Holy Ghost archer tonight, and I'm shooting an arrow, a prophetic word. Somebody's getting ready to go where you've never gone. See what you never saw. Do what you never done. Make money you never made. Have connections you never had. Live in a house you never lived in. Drive a car you never drove. This is a season where God's going to do the unheard of in your life. Come on, give him praise. Woo, glory to God. Amen, i got to borrow the words of Paul. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God has in store for you. That's not in the sweet by and by. That is right now before you get to heaven. I am prophesying. It's going to be a season that you're going to see what you never saw, hear what you never heard. God's going to do things that's not normal in this season. 
Turn around and tell somebody, he's prophesying to me. Hallelujah. If some of you only knew what God was going to do in your life in the next season, you would be giving God the craziest fanatical praise you ever give him. If See, sometimes, sometimes God has to show you a little bit at a time. Because if he showed you everything, some of y'all just have a heart attack and die. If you could see, I'm prophesying. If some of you could see what God's getting ready to do in the next season, in the next season of your life, if you could see what God was getting ready to do, you wouldn't be able to sleep all night. You'd be up shouting, praising God, talking in tongues. I'm telling you, I am prophetically decreeing this ministry, everybody connected to this ministry. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's a new hour. And God's going to do things he's never done before. And I need somebody to give God a praise. Come on, give him a real praise like you believe it. Preacher, you're getting ready to preach like you never preached. Builder, you're getting ready to build like you never built. Teacher, you're getting ready to teach like you've never taught. Prophet, you're getting ready to prophesy like you never prophesied. Somebody's getting ready to write their first book. Somebody's going to sign their first contract. Somebody's going to make a first CD. Somebody's going to open their first business. Somebody's going to be the first in your family to be a millionaire. This is a season of first. Come on, this is a season of the new. This is a season of the unheard of. God's going to do stuff that's going to blow your mind. Woo, praise him in the house. Glory to God. God's getting ready to make an example out of you of how good he is. God's getting ready to pre- Oh Lord. God's getting ready to provoke the world to jealousy by your blessings. I've been prophesying. There was a, I I love Israel. I've been going to Israel 40 years. 40 years I've been going to Israel. I first went when I was, I think, three-year-old. I'm sorry, I'm under the tent. Okay, I was at least three-year-old. Amen. But do you know, there was a man on one of the big networks, Christian networks, a Jew, uh, uh, some days ago, and they asked him, how come more Jews do not turn to Yahshua? And he said, Jews do not turn to Christ. One of the main reasons is because they believe if you become a Christian, you have to be poor. But I've been prophesying that God's going to bless the body of Christ so much that we're going to provoke the Jews to jealousy. The Bible says that they're going to be provoked to jealousy. We're going to be so blessed the Jews, not the Christians looking to the Jews, the Jews are going to look to the kingdom people and say, my God, look how good their God is to them. Look what Yahshua has done for them. Somebody say, I want to be an example. Amen. I want to be an example. Amen. I want God to use me to show the world how good he is. God's going to use some of you to show the world how good he is. What God is getting ready to do is going to be so amazing, so powerful. It's going to be so great. The message Bible says it's going to cause your head to swim. You're going to feel like you're drunk but not because you had a bottle. You're going to be drunk on blessings. Boy, I never said that before. I like that. So I hear the Holy Ghost say, you need to, get, you need to practice because some of you are getting ready to say wow a whole lot. Everybody shout wow. Now shout it backward. 
Wow, y'all are smart. I, I want to prophesy. You're going to be saying, wow. Wow, look what. Wow, look who I just met. Wow, look at the check I just got in the mail. Wow, look at, I just got approved for a new house. Wow, look at the door God just opened. I'm going to Israel. I'm going on a paid vacation. I'm paying cash for a car. I'm debt free. I won the court case. I just had a God moment. Come on, according to your faith, shout wow. wow. There better be more than one. Wow, 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 wow. Let's try that again. Remember when the prophet said, strike, get the arrow, amen, and the man limited himself. I don't want you to limit yourself. I want you to shout wow however many times your faith, amen, will let you shout it. You're getting ready to see God. There's going to be so many wows in your life. Somebody, according to your faith, shout. Now give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Give the Lord a praise. How did you get it? God did it. How did you arrive? God did it. How did you live there? God did it. How did you meet that person? God did it. God told me the other day, he said, I'm getting ready to bless my people, and I'm going to bless them so great. It'll be something greater than mama can do, something greater than the job can do, something greater than the government can do. God said, all my people will be able to say is, look what the Lord hath done. Oh, how did you get it? How did you do it? God did it. <laughs> somebody shout, God did it. Turn around and tell somebody, God did it. Hallelujah. How many is ready for your head to swim? God's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all. That you're able to ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. Some of you are going to feel like the children of Israel in Psalms 126. When God turned their captivity, they said we were like them that dream. You're going to look in the mirror and have to pinch yourself or smile at yourself because you're going to be happy and you're not even going to be in heaven. Some of you single people are going to be married and you're not going to be dreaming. I first married my love, I'd wake up and just look, make sure I, it's not a dream. Come on. Some of you are going to have gold, uh, and you're going to have it before heaven. You're going to think you're dreaming. Amen. Life ought to be so good. I preached in New York last night. We ought to be the healthiest, uh, happiest, uh, wealthiest uh, people on the planet Earth. In Deuteronomy, it says, as the days of your fathers when it was as heaven on earth. Come on. People says it's not achievable. I'm telling you, there's a place in the glory that you can enter, a place with God that it is as heaven on earth, where you're the bar, not you're the lender and not the bar, where you walk in prosperity, you walk in the glory, you walk in faith, you walk in health. Come on. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven to experience heaven. There is heaven to go to heaven in. It seemed like a dream, too good to be true. We laughed, we laughed. Turn around and tell somebody it's time you laugh. Then, 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 then it said we sung. Uh, don't tell everybody that. Don't tell everybody to sing because some folks can't sing. Some folks cannot sing. Some folks miss their call. Some folks miss their call. They can sing, but tell them to sing very quietly. 
You ever heard somebody in the old, I, I come from the old school of Pentecost, and people get up to sing in those old days and say, they say, now don't listen to how I sound. And after they start singing, I knew why they said that. They would say, they would say, listen to the words. And I'm thinking, if all you really want is me to know the words, please save my ears and make copies of the words and hand them out. <laughs> they said, they said we laughed and we we sung. We could not believe our good fortune. We were the talk of the town, the nations, the heathen. Amen. The world was talking about them. I'm telling some of you, you're going to be so blessed, you're going to be the talk of your enemies. Come on, somebody. You're going to be the talk of the town. You're going to be the talk of your ex. I'm going to find where my people are in just a minute. Amen. We were the talk of the town. God has been good to them. That's what their enemy said. Some of you, you're going to be so blessed, even your enemies are going to have to say, God has been good to them. And they said, God has been good to us. We are one happy people. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody throw your hands into the glory dimension and receive the prophetic word that God's getting ready to bless you so much your head is going to swim. Number two, notice these words, what God showed me. Number one, Amos said, the plowman is going to overtake the reaper. In other words, the unheard of is going to take place. Number two, it's going to be so great what God's going to do, it's going to make your head swim. Number three, four prophetic words God give me out of this verse. These, listen, number three, Amos said, things are going to happen so fast. Somebody missed that right there. You did not get it. Things are going to happen so fast. I said things, I'm prophesying, things are getting ready to happen so fast. I prophesy over here, things are getting ready to happen so fast. I just saw a vision of a DVD player. A DVD player has something called rewind. That's where... Uh, you go back and you see what you already saw. Then it's got something called uh, pause, and that's just everything stops. That's where some of you have been. Then it's got something called play, and that is show me now what I should be seeing. But I just saw a vision, and I saw a button that said fast forward. Come on. Fast forward is, show me now what I should see later. That's what God's getting ready to do. Oh, Lord, I'm prophesying now. For some of you, some of you, you feel like it's been on pause. Your life's been on pause. Everything's been on pause. God's getting ready to push the fast forward button. And you're going to see more done in the next 30 days than some of you saw in the last three years. Come on. Listen, it's going to happen so quick. In other words, God's going to do what he's going to do, and he's going to do it quickly. He's going to do it so fast. Okay, I hear this coming out of my spirit. You're going to get more done in a short period of time with less toll. That's a tweet. Every time I hear something from the Lord fresh, I always say tweet it. Tell the world. You're going to gain more territory. Y'all better catch this. In the next season, you're going to do more in the next season with less work. Man, some of y'all should have shouted on that one. You're going to get more accomplished with less toll. 
God is getting ready. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Doors that should take 10 years to open, some of you will have those doors open in three months. Houses that you should not qualify to own till you're on your job for eight years, some of you is going to qualify in eight months. Money that you shouldn't make for 30 years, some of you is going to make that same amount of money in three years. Promotions that you should not get until 10 years, you'll get it in one month. I feel like prophesying. Come on. A spirit of acceleration is sweeping through this tent tonight. A, a spirit of acceleration is going to sweep through this tent and God's going to move so quick in some of your lives, your head's going to swim. Come on, if you believe it, clap your hands like you believe it. The word acceleration means, the word acceleration means a speeding up, uh, a increase in the rate of speed, uh, a speeding up. Uh, that's what, I put it this way, God is going to shorten the process. <laughs> Maybe I'm preaching to myself, I, John chapter 2, Jesus turned the water to wine. And, and after he did, the, the, the ruler, the governor said, uh, oh, this wine was so good. He said, uh, you, you know me, this served first, and but you've served it last. They've served it last, and, and it's such a good wine. And, and if you study out, uh, there's a process to, to making wine. Bad wine takes three to five uh, years. A good wine takes 15 to 20 years. How long did it take Jesus? Ten minutes. Now, I'm, I'm in a faith zone. I'm in a faith realm. I've studied faith more than I've ever studied faith in the last few months because I moved in faith. We started on TV in America, on the Impact Network, which is the largest African-American-owned network in America. Our first check to write was 42000 I said, Lord, i got to live in faith right now. So I want to tell you something to blow some of your mind, but somebody might believe it. God took what should took 15 to 20 years and done it in less than 10 minutes. God can make you a millionaire in 10 days. God can cause you to be debt free in 10 days. I tell you what, you got faith. God can cause you to be debt free by tomorrow night at this time. Come on, you got to take the limits off of God. God's getting ready to do some stuff that's going to make our heads swim. I had some partners. They were up in their uh, 70s, 77, 78, drove an old car. Every time I was anywhere within 70, 80 miles, they'd drive that old car to my tent revivals or wherever, and they needed a new vehicle, and, and they had a, a drawing in their city, and they were giving away a, a pickup truck, brand new, 5,000 names probably in that box. Well, they put their name in the box, and they had the drawing that Saturday morning. Amen. 5,000 names. And the man reaches in that box to pull out a name, and whoever's name is going to be the proud owners of a brand new pickup. Who do you think they drawed out of the box? They passed up all the teenagers. They passed up all the alcoholics and drug addicts and got down the bottom of that box and found that couple safe, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost, pulled their name out, and in one day they went to a brand new truck. Come on, I'm telling some of you, amen. God spoke to me just the other night, and I preached it a week ago tonight on church by phone and over Periscope and all. God said, we're stepping into a season of surprises. God said, I'm getting ready to surprise. He said, I'm getting ready to surprise my people. I'm going to bless them with things they don't even know is coming. This is a season to have faith for the unexpected. You don't know what's coming. You just believe something's coming. Don't act like you don't like surprises. Some of you are 59, 81, and you still love surprise birthday parties. 
God's got some surprises for some of you. If I be a man of God, God's going to surprise some of you with checks in the mail, promotions, raises, connections, finances, contracts. Come on, let your face soar. Oh, take a praise break. Hallelujah. God can change it overnight. Let's not forget Joseph went from a prisoner to prime minister in about two liars. Come on. David went from a shepherd boy to be an anointed king in less than 10 minutes. Prophet saw him, poured the oil. Come on, you want me to go on and on? Ruth went from working in the fields to owning the fields in a matter of days. Children of Israel went from extreme poverty to extreme wealth in one day's time. They were in poverty. But when they come out of Egypt, they, they brought millions. Read your Bible. When Moses asked for an offering to build the tabernacle, they brought so much money, amen, that the elders come and said, we got a problem, pastor. He said, what is it? They're bringing too much money. And it would cost in today's currency in America, it's like hundreds of millions in Canadian money. It would be hundreds of millions. And they still had money left over. God took them from poverty to wealth in one day's time. Do, do we serve the same God? Are we under a better covenant? Some of you in the next two nights, three count tonight, your faith is going to soar to a dimension that's going to cause you to step into a season of an open heaven, and God's going to pour out his treasures Have mercy. Turn around and tell somebody God's going to do it. Amos 9, 13. Four prophetic words. The fourth one. Out of this scripture. The fourth one. Now I love this. God's going to do the unheard of. Number one. Number two. What he's going to do is going to be so great, it's going to make your head swim. Number three, he's going to do what he's going to do quickly. Fourthly, notice what the Bible says. One thing happening on the heels of the other you will not be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. The last prophetic word God showed me out of this scripture is you're not only going to experience one miracle, one blessing, one breakthrough, it is going to be a season of miracle after miracle, breakthrough after breakthrough, Okay, I, I know I'll break it down for you Canadians so you'll understand. One check after another. One raise after another. One connection after another. From glory to glory. From faith to faith. One door, another door, another door, another door. Amen. Oh, my God. Look at that stack of mail. Is that bill? Check, check. No, it's not bills. It's check, checks, check. Woo. One thing on the heels of another. Favor upon favor. I'm telling you, church, we are stepping into a season we have never been in before. God told me the other day, he said, son, I'm in a blessing mood. And I said that. At one church I was at, old Pentecostal folks, and they looked at me like I was backslid because I said God's in a blessing mood. So I'm a prophet. So I told him, I said, now some of y'all, if I said God was in a killing mood, you'd be on your feet shouting. Yeah. True. 
Hey, yeah, yeah, Alan, preach a message. God's a killer. Man, most church folks preach it, man. Kill them, God. Kill them all. Kill them all. I said, but I say God's in a blessing mood, and church folks have a problem handling that. I don't know about you. I'm so glad God's not in a killing mood. Aren't you glad God's not in a killing mood? I'm glad God's in a blessing mood. I celebrate the feast. My family celebrates the feast. We have great miracles happen in the feast that we celebrate. I mean, just unbelievable, undescribable miracles. I had six in one day on the feast of tabernacle. But God said, I'm in a blessed mood. And it's like I just heard him in my spirit. He said, I'm just going to create a special feast right now. Some of y'all better take advantage of what God's doing right now. Come on. God is going to cause one thing. On the heels of another, one miracle that will even lead to another miracle, one door that will open another door, one connection that will lead to another connection, one uh, breakthrough that will lead to another breakthrough. And this, God showed me two scripts, two stories here. I'll share very quickly uh, of how it happened in Genesis, where Joseph was sitting in prison, feeling forsaken, feeling forgotten had a prophetic word, but everything went opposite than what the prophetic word was or the dream was. But now he feels forsaken. He feels forgotten. But notice what begins to happen. All of a sudden, the butler remembers him. Number one, he's delivered from prison. Number two, he stands before Pharaoh. Number three, he interprets Pharaoh's dream. Number four, he moves into the palace, number five. He gets a Cadillac, I mean a chariot. Number six, he becomes prime minister, number seven. All of it happens one thing after another, and it probably took less than an hour for it all to happen. The butler remembers him. That leads to the next miracle, the next miracle, the next miracle. One thing after another. God showed me the story in Ruth, Ruth, the book of Ruth, where Ruth goes to Bethlehem, Judah, with her mother-in-law, Naomi, and she has nothing. She has nothing. She is cursed by God. Uh, Moabites were living under a curse. I like to say, though, that her, her, her faith in God was greater than the curse upon her. And it broke that curse. And she goes uh, to Bethlehem, Judea. And then she goes to the fields to work, number two. Number one, she goes to Bethlehem, Judea. Number two, she goes to the fields to work. Number three, Boaz, Bozo, Boaz. Okay, Boaz. Some of you women got a Bozo anointing attraction. I told my church, we got all these single women that once married, and I give a prophetic word, and I said, God's going to send you uh, Boazes, and, and it's been again to happen. They begin to find husbands, and it's been amazing. But I got back a few weeks later, and I said, some of y'all did not understand. Y'all thought I said Bozo. I said, it's not Bozo coming. It's Boaz. Bozo got a job. Bozo got some house. Bozo got a, 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 a Cadillac, a, a chariot. A, okay, Bozo uh, uh, is not in rehab. Some of you women have a rehab anointing. Everybody you find needs a rehab. Okay, wait, let's, let's look here. Bozo, Boaz. Number one, she goes to Bethlehem, Judah. Number two, she goes to fields to work. Number three, Boaz notices her. Number four, he tells his workers, leave handfuls on purpose for her. One thing after another. Number five, he marries her. Number six, she conceives and becomes pregnant with a son. And from that lineage comes the Son of God. And here's what God spoke to me, and I'm going to close. I'm not preaching real long, but we're going, to lay, we're going to anoint people tonight, and we're going to see some great things happen. God said to me, and I, I never was in a service I even heard anybody ever mention this. He said, uh, what I'm going to do is going to be like a domino effect anointing that is coming on my people. One thing after another. So I... Uh, 
I had our workers a while back get a, some dominoes. I believe it was 23 of them. They lined up, and we hit that first one, and it's a domino effect, and we had them time it with a watch a clock you know, that can go by seconds, and for 20, listen how quick. This is in the natural. Oh, Lord. How quick God can work for you. When, when I touch that first domino, the 23 dominoes fell in 2.3 seconds. All right, wake up over here. It can, that's how quick the domino effect anointing or the domino effect works. God said, what I'm getting ready to do for my people is going to be like a domino effect, and it's in the scripture I just read, one thing on the heels of another. It will be happening so fast. Some of you are not just going to see a miracle in one area. You're going to see your family saved, your prodigal come home. You're going to get a check in the mail. You're going to get a refilling of the Holy Ghost. You're going to get drunk in the Holy Ghost. You're going to have a divine connection. Somebody's going to move in a new house. Great anointing. Great anointing right now for new houses. Great anointing being released. We are seeing absolute amazing miracles of people moving in houses that they did not build. He said, I'll give you houses you did not build. Let me say this real quick. He said, I'll give you houses you did not build. At this time, the children of Israel had never lived in houses. They had always lived in tents. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they always lived in tents. Now they're getting ready to go into the promised land, and God says, I'm going to give you houses you didn't build. The only problem was those houses belonged to somebody else. Has God ever told you something belongs to you, but somebody else has it? It belonged to the giants because in the promised land were giants. Now, if God would have let them build their own houses, they would have built their size of houses. But giants build giant houses. Come on, somebody. They had never lived in houses. God could have let them build their own houses. They had to build little bitty old houses. That's why some of you, God's not going to let you build your own house. You build a little bitty house. God's letting some sinner build your house. They're going to move out and you're moving in. Now giants, now little, little, little midgets build little houses. And I got a story about a midget that God healed that grew to six foot tall. Maybe I'll tell that tomorrow night. But little midgets are going to build little doors and little bedrooms and normal people's going to build little rooms. But giants that stand nine, ten feet tall, they're going to build big doors and they're going to build big bedrooms and big kitchens. And God said, I'm going to let you move into houses you didn't build. The giants build them and they build them real big, but I'm going to let you move right in and give you houses you didn't build. Come on, somebody. God's getting ready to move so amazing. Stand to your feet all over the house. God's getting ready to move so greatly. I am prophetically Korean. Move the pulpit, please, if you would. Thank you. Lift your hands up into the glory dimension. Could we have our, our, our musicians come, please, our keyboard player, player? Come on, lift your hands up into the glory dimension. Lift your hands up into the glory zone. Now lift your voice and let your voice just go into the heavenlies. Come on, let your voice just go into the heavenlies. Let your voice just go right into the presence of the Lord. Lift your voice. Come on, lift your hand. Lift your voice. Yeah, come on, I feel something. Come on. That, come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's praise him. Let's just worship for a moment. Come on, let's worship. Just for a moment. He loves worship. 
Come on, God's getting ready to do something. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Do we have uh, catchers? Do we have catchers? My God, there it is. I see a promotion. I see a promotion. Where's my all? Come on, let your faith soar. Come on, we're in the glory. Oh, we're in the glory. We're in the glory. I want, I want to prophetically decree tonight, those of you that believe that you are about to step into a new season, you believe the greatest is yet ahead. I hear the scripture coming out of my spirit. The greater is coming. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house. I hear my spirit. I hear somebody is going to step into a season of restoration. The anointing is flowing through my left hand. Everything the, anointing, everything the enemy has stole, God is getting ready to restore. And God's a God of double, at least double, double restoration. If you have the faith seven times, whatever stowed. I'll tell you what I want to do first. I have not done this, and I don't know when. It's, I don't know when the last time I've done this, but I, I just feel a real strong anointing. Could you bring the oil up here and stand by me? I want anybody and everybody that needs or believes for a miracle in housing. Let me, let me finish. If you, you want to own your own house, you want a bigger house, you're trying to sell a house, try to sell a, a property, anything with property, I want you to come up and make a line, and I want to decree that that thing's going to move quick. This is a great seed. People are becoming first-time house homeowners. Amen. I could tell you a story. I'll tell it one night. I was in a service where someone got a house, somebody give them a house in the middle of a church, expensive house. There is no limit to what God can do. Look at this. Look at this. You're not too old. You're not too old. You're not too young. I'm just going to come by. Go ahead and sing. I want to come by and anoint you and seal this word. Amen. And some of you are going to have a miracle in property or houses in the next season of your life. Go ahead and sing. <laughs> I decree it. I anoint you with the holy oil. I decree it. Stand by me. Thank you. Hey! <laughs> I like it. Oh, Lord, what a beautiful. I hear God's time will make an example out of y'all. Amen. God's going to make an example. There's been some stuff y'all's gone through, but God said, I'm going to pay you double. They've gone through some stuff, but God's getting ready to reward them. Jesus, I decree it in your life according to your faith. Let it be. What are you believing for? More. More. Power of God's all over you. I hear the Lord say, I'm getting ready to open up the spirit rim like I have never opened it up before to you. You're going to see stuff so clearly, it's going to be a shock to you. You're going to see the crossing of the T and the dotting of the I, and prophecies are coming out of your mouth that's going to change the nations. Woo! That house is on the market right now, but it's all plugged up too much. Nothing. Nothing. So God may have to send a buyer from somewhere else. But he can do it. I tried to sell a property one time. Nothing. Like you, we went for six months, not even a phone call. 
know what God told us? He said, raise the price. We raised it 35,000, sold it in 30 days. Wow. <laughs> I decree this property to sell. He needs it to be sold. It's not doing him. I call it done. Ooh, you got an anointing on you. I call double, double. Hey, there, there it goes. Woo, glory to God. I decree it. Man, you got an anointing on you. I, hey, it's coming out of you. There's some blessings in your future. You're a worshiper, and your worship's got my attention. Ask what you will. Oh, mama, there it is. God's going to bless you. There's some surprises. Oh, some of my favorite people, Lord. Give them some surprises. I decree three surprises in the next season of her life. <laughs> hey! Lord, everything, anything with property, let it line up to your will. Accelerate it. Let it be quick like you did last time. Do it again. God, it's time for a promotion. I hear that in my spirit. It's time for the next level. It's time for the next level. I decree in the next season they will step into their next level. Woo! My God, the power of God's all over you. <laughs> Receive it. God's got a surprise for you. <laughs> oh, my God, a surprise. You don't even know it's coming. You're not even going to know it till you get it. Oh! We decree it. We decree it. Things are going to start moving. The button's going off a of pause, going fast forward. <laughs> oh, you got an, I, I decree an Esther anointing on you. You're going to got, oh, there it goes now in Jesus' name. Come on, let's worship. I'm a baby. Lord, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Shocker, surprise her. Get drunk on the Holy Ghost. Fill her, fill her, fill her. Everything's going to be all right, baby. God just said everything's going to be all right. Accelerate. Some stuff's been on hold. But I prophetically decree it will be released. God's going to put the puzzle together. That puzzle been tore apart. God said, I'm putting it together. Hi, baby. Woo! Lord, bless my Ethiopians. I love them. I, this man pulled on my anointing. He pulled on it. Give him a shot. A surprise. <laughs> Lord, thank you for my friend. Yes, yes going to use you, man. Amen. God's going to bless you, man. You got something coming you don't even know about. Receive it. In time handmaiden of the Lord, thou shalt prophesy and thou shalt declare the goodness of the Lord and bring many young people to the ways of God. Hello, dear. Oh, Lord, what do you want? The real estate. I'm in the real estate business. Oh, you. Oh, Lord. Oh, we got a lady in one of our churches who was new in real estate is already the number one seller in the whole area, selling millions, millions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hear end time financer of the kingdom. End time financer of the kingdom. End time financer of the kingdom. Let the favor of God fall. Woo. Brother, God's got, he's going to bless the work of your hands. What you put your hands to is going to be blessed. You look so beautiful in the spirit. Oh, my Lord, God's going to, you've had some hard times and good times. You've had some great times and then there's some times that wasn't so great. But God says, I'm getting ready to make your ladder the greatest you ever had. <laughs> you've done some crying, but God says you're going to laugh twice as hard as you ever cried. There it is. Release it quick. 
What an anointing on your life. I feel the anointing. I sense the anointing. The favor of God is falling on your life. Right now, in the name of Jesus, you're going to step into a season of divine favor. Oh, my God. There's a breakthrough. There's a breakthrough. The struggle is over. Struggle is over. Woo. Anybody else? Anybody else? Brother, I don't tell everybody, but I see a prosperity anointing coming on you. God's going to bless you. He's going to bless the work of your hands. There's getting ready to be an enlargement. I anoint you for it in Jesus' name. Come on, church. The Lord is doing some things. Some things are being established in the heavenly realm. Do it, Lord. There it is.